Aloha! So, about four years ago, I did a UI and basics kind of video on how to set up your UI, the ba very basics of engagements and things like that. And uh, obviously that video is a bit outdated. Some of the things have changed and quite frankly, the quality of video was not great. So I decided that I would try to redo the video, um, which pretty much I was asked by some viewers and some folks that had started playing the game to do this so let's get into it we'll get started again this is going to be a very basics we're going to talk about the ui a bit ship positioning a little bit and some basics to help your team hopefully get a win Now this is a training room. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm in a tier 10 battleship. I have a tier 10 bot. It's gonna be stationary. It's not gonna be engaging me, but this is good for the chance for me to just have time and be able to show you some of the things that you could look at. Um, typically when you're new to the game, this is the screen that you're gonna see. Uh, after you've kind of learned the maps some, for me, at least, I usually tell people to go ahead and click on team members. This is important, especially after you've been playing a little while, to see if you recognize any names. You're going to start learning who is good that you have to worry about, um, things of that nature. Now, for me, <clears throat> I have some settings in here that are a little bit different than some... Um, but this is what I do. So if you go to controls, one of the first things I turn, the default, this is off. Alternative interface mode is set to off. Now, if I go to my UI, you're going to see that this is a very basic UI. There's not much going on here. You're not seeing a whole lot of information. You literally see ship names on either side. Now, what I do, I go to controls. A lot of this stuff is off. I just realized that that was another setting. This is actually how your UI will probably look. And actually your map's going to be probably about that big. So what I do is I go to settings. You go to controls. Now one of the first things that's very important to me at least is this alternative interface mode. I set this to full. Okay. What this does is going to give me a lot more information on top of the enemy ship. A lot more useful information to me. It's going to give me information like their hit point count, their, their screen name, the ship they're in, things like that. The other thing I like to see on either side of my map is the team lineups. So as ships get spotted, the colors will change. But from the get-go, you can see what the enemy has right here. Okay. <clears throat> now, the other thing I do, and this is just preferential to me um, because I play on a fairly large monitor. It may be different for you depending on what you play. If you use the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard, you can actually change the size of your minimap. One of the most important things on your battle screen is this minimap. I cannot reiterate that enough. Constantly looking at the minimap, looking at the enemy ship disposition, their positioning in general. These things are very important, okay? So, for me at least, I run with my map maxed out, maximum size. Um, because I'm constantly looking from where my crosses are to the minimap. Where my crosshairs are to the minimap. And I do that pretty regularly if you ever watch me on stream you'll see me kind of doing my head will be moving like this a lot because i'm constantly looking where the enemy is situational awareness in world of warships is probably one of the most important things that you could um have in general okay <clears throat> another setting that i change I have found over the years, for me at least, this collision avoidance system, it defaults to on. Essentially what that does is if you're headed at an island or an, uh, a friendly ship, it'll attempt to turn your ship to avoid that collision. Um, 
for me, sometimes those turns have actually resulted in catastrophe for me, depending on if it turns you into torpedoes and things of that nature. I have found it is easier for me to shut that off um, and try to avoid playing bumper boats or running into islands myself, okay? The terrain hit indicator is also very important. You want to make sure that that is on so that you can see if you're going to hit a mountain or if you're going to actually be able to clear that shot or not. I also turn on my damage counter, my potential damage. Um, these things are not necessarily something you need to put up, but uh, for me, it's kind of important. So we've got the enemy ship over here. Okay, so let's talk about this. So like I said, the alternative interface puts up a hit point counter for me, the name of the ship driver and the ship name itself. This is important because A, you need to know how much damage you're able to put out. Over time, you're gonna learn these things, what you're capable of doing, what they can do to you. So you may need to change the angle that you engage enemy target at. Okay, so a few things specifically about the UI. If you hit control, it releases your mouse and you can go over here and I believe, let me turn, do I think the game defaults to this, I believe. This might have changed recently. Um, someone in the comments can correct me if I'm incorrect, but um, so you're gonna see some circles on the map, okay? This outer circle that's solid is going to be your maximum gun range. Um, and actually, if I go like this and I zoom all the way in, you're going to see a dot here. This dot is actually where this little crosshair is sitting. So that dot corresponds to this. OK, this doesn't mean necessarily this is exactly where your shells will land, but it's an approximation because over uh, as you as you move uh, at range your cell dispersion increases so your your gunshot kind of becomes more of like a shotgun blast at range okay this inner there i should say outer dashed line is going to be the ship detection so when your ship is detected by another ship that'll be the range as well you'll see the ranges here on the circle itself 17.3 this inner circle is going to be your one of the latest additions to the game, your airstrike ability. OK, that's what this is right here. This is for dropping depth charges and only dropping depth charges on submarines. OK, you see this in battle all the time. People will try to drop depth charges on battleships, cruisers, um, we could go into why this is an important tactic to use in the future <clears throat> for trying to discover destroyers. But hold on to this airstrike. There's a couple reasons why you don't want to just spam this. One, you're paying for ordnance. OK, your ammunition cost is a thing in this game. So if you're just spamming shots out there, you're actually hurting yourself economically. This is something to think about, right? When you're playing a game uh, Two, these don't do any damage to surface ships. OK, you'll see I'll drop them right on top of this conqueror. <coughs> it's not going to do any damage to him. Um, it'll fly over. They drop the depth charges, they hit the water. Depth charges go off, nothing, right? So there's no point necessarily doing this to battleships, cruisers, and we can talk later about why it might be important for helping you discover if destroyers are around. Okay, so that's the solid inner circle. Now, one of the things that I turn on always on my ships is detectability range by air. So if aircraft are flying at you, this is w at the point where your ship will be detected. Um, and it's not completely necessary, but you can turn on the rest of these circles. Your AA maximum circle, this is where your anti-aircraft guns will reach. Your secondary battery. Your secondaries are these guns right here that you're seeing on the side of the ship that you don't control, okay? The AI will control those if an enemy ship bumbles into that range. 
Now, four crosshairs. You can go to controls, hit select crosshair. Now, you can do static or dynamic. Now, what I'm going to do is set it to what the game defaults to. Okay, this is static type 2. So you see the numbers don't change. There's no difference. What's going on on the screen? Okay, so firstly, right here where this arrow is pointing, 9.98 or 89 kilometers, where this crosshair is matching on that ship matches with the range here. This range will round up. It only shows one decimal point, but it's telling you this target is 9.89 kilometers away. It's also telling you that you have 5.2 seconds of flight time to the target. So if I fire once, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. A little over five seconds. Obviously, I can't really count milliseconds. 5.26 seconds. Why is this important? So if I'm moving at full speed and he's moving this direction at full speed, this is how I'm going to figure out how much I need to lead the target. So each one of these tick marks is going to be a second, right? Now, obviously, we're both stationary, but if I needed to, I could go one, two, three, four, five point two one. So you'd want to go a little under half, right? So realistically, wherever I want my shots to land, that's where I wanted to lead. So if I wanted my shots to land where I last fired, I would want to lead him like that if I were moving. Now, stationary, obviously, you don't necessarily need to do this. And you can see ish, that's about where you want to do to put it. Now, for before you download mods and you start changing things on your ship, my suggestion is you go to controls, you check select crosshairs, and you change it to dynamic, okay? Save changes. I'm going to show you the difference. Now, as you see, the numbers change, okay, as I zoom in and out. Why is this important? Because if I'm shooting at something at range, but I'm zoomed out to here, you can see it's quite difficult to still lead as well as aim. But if I zoom in, those numbers change, okay? That's the first thing I typically tell everyone. Go to static, or change from static to dynamic, so that they actually change, okay? Now, as you play more and you get used to leading and what have you, you could do th use mods like what I use. I use Nomogram's gun sight. <clears throat> it, the tick marks are actually different based off of speed, okay? Um, and But we won't go into that because right now that we're looking at the very basics. Now, right now in an engagement, how you see my ship angled is actually very poor. OK, if this conqueror were to shoot at me, he has a fairly flush target to hit. The shells will come at me at approximately this angle here and probably do quite a bit of damage. Something you want to be mindful of is those ships angles. So I'm going to angle, assuming the conqueror is shooting AP. OK. We're going to move the ship into a better angle. And the reason I, sh I say this is I want to show you a little bit of how you should be angling your armor. Okay, any of you that's played World of Tanks understand angled armor probably. But you can see the Conqueror, because he's the body's not moving, so he's at a very poor angle. I took 13,000 off of him with three penetrating hits. Let me show you what a Montana full broadside when you're not angled can do. Okay. So that was actually a pretty low damage roll, um, believe it or not, for a stationary target broad. I got one Citadel, but I still am putting out 40,000 damage, okay? Now I'm going to show you at this angle. Now you see my secondaries are opening up. I'm going to shut those off. I'll talk about that in a second here. My secondaries caught a fire, of course. 
This angle is a pretty good angle to engage a conquer at, not necessarily at this range, mind you. Um, this is a very basic, you, your angled armor is pretty important. If those of you that don't know, I mean, you could literally Google or look at videos on YouTube of um, angling armor and you'll see examples of it throughout history. People figured out what it is. So there's a couple ways you can shoot your guns. One, you could do like I did where I salvoed all my guns at the same time, okay? Or, we have to wait 25 seconds. While we're talking about that, something that um, I mentioned earlier about shutting my secondaries off, and I'll shut my camera off for this so you can see. There's a little icon down here, right? That literally says off on it. If you hit P, it turns your secondaries on. At the beginning of the game, the game defaults them on. You can shut them off. I'll be honest with you, in, for the most part, in a battleship, there's not a particular reason to leave them off. I typically will roll on a battleship with them on. That's normal for me, but for the discussion in this video, I'm gonna leave them off, okay? So the other way that you can shoot your guns is ripple fire. The way you do this is you push and hold left mouse button and you see it fires from the forward turret going to the aft, okay? In pretty quick succession. All right. This is pretty much, I think, about most of the things that I wanted to talk about in terms of the very, very basics here. I'm gonna ripple fire on them, kill them, go back to port. Now, something else I wanted to talk about. And we're gonna probably, I'm gonna share a video with you guys. We're gonna talk about what I see in this video um, because Something that is a very common issue you run into in World of Warships is specifically people that don't understand that they need to hold and stay on the flank that they spawn on, okay? This is a tier 8 fight, but there are, it's every all ships from tier 6 to tier 8 that I'm going to show you. This is a battle that... Um, I recognize and understand why these three ships who are in a division, by the way, are going to do what you're going to see. They're going to abandon the flank. World of Warships will routinely, for whatever reason, spawn the bottom tier ships by themselves out on a flank and the opposing ships will sometimes be top tier ships now this could be intimidating if you're a tier six in a tier eight fight but that doesn't mean that your guns are not functional or not useful it doesn't mean that you can't ask for help it doesn't mean that you can fight and you're gonna see there's a, a few mistakes that we're gonna go over here um that occur with this team so we're going to let me roll this all the way through so you can watch it and see, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the beginning. There's a few things in this video that occur, and this is the perfect illustration of pretty much how you don't want things to go in your battle. One, you don't abandon the flank that you spawned on. Two, when an enemy nears your cap, 
Pushing to the enemy cap is not the move. Three, lack of focus fire. Four, if you play a carrier, focusing on the weak flank is pretty important. And five, recognizing when you might need to pull back or focus specific targets, okay? So I'm gonna switch back to the video and we're gonna kind of just jump through the video and talk about what we see, okay? Now again, these guys were in a division, uh, these three. So a conversation's probably happening on Discord. As soon as this battle starts, they're probably all right, like already saying, what the heck is this? You know, all the sevens and eights, including the carrier are west. Our tier sixes are in the east. No discussion in chat about needing help over here occurred, okay? Not a single word was said, but instead, what do they do? So, nothing on the east side was spotted, and these two battleships, instead of thinking about positioning to kite or save their hit points, make a 90 degree right turn and start heading west, completely abandoning the flank. Nothing is spotted here, okay? The Farragut did what a Farragut probably should. He moved up to see if he could get spotting. Unfortunately, the carrier uh, caught him, and a Tyrant carrier versus a Farragut is not going to be a great experience for the Farragut. Now, this being said, you have a carrier. So there's nothing wrong with, in chat, saying... Hey, CV, do you think you can help the east side or spot the east side since most of our team is west? Most people, surprisingly to you maybe, will be receptive to this, okay? Um, if you're in this Andrea Doria or the Renown, asking for help from the ships over here would be good. Okay, let's move on. Now, at this point... The Farragut died. You've got a Cossack and a Maya over here. That's all that's been spotted here, right? So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ships, plus the carrier's ten. So there's two ships unaccounted for still. Now, personally, what I would be doing if I was this renowned in Andrew Doria, I would be turning back towards the island here to engage whatever comes this way. You had a tier eight destroyer that was coming this way to also help, okay? I would like to point out how many flights our carrier flies over here to help as the video progresses. Now at this point, the Latarib understands he's not gonna have support that these battleships aren't going to really engage. The Andrea Doria actually at this time was aiming at the Atlanta, even though this Maya came out broadside to him. The, the Tarib actually decides to pull back. He's got an enemy carrier coming for him, and our Pobeda, our carrier, is still flying aircraft down this three line. At this point, I had already asked the Repulse and the Andrea Doria to turn around, kite northeast, Right, so that would be going this way while engaging. These are pretty powerful ships. You're gonna take some damage, you're gonna lose some hit points, but they they actually are in a position right now that these battleships that are higher tier are going to wreck them more than if they were going northeast and slowing this push, okay? I was in the Sharn Horse and admittedly, I figured this was a very strong position right here. And it is, assuming you have backup. We had a lot of tier eights and other ships here, um, but you're gonna see how this turns out. Okay. Now, at this point, look how the ships are spotted. Right now, looking at this battle, the only ships that are on this eight seven eight line are the maya that's it that's the only ships so if those three hadn't abandoned the flank that's all they would have been fighting probably instead they are over here with the rest of the team they drove across the map they're broadside to tier eight battleships tier seven battleships a cossack the atlanta's in a good position to start spamming he and the enemy carrier is all he's seeing right here on the five line is food that's all you see. 
right? And you're going to see the, the Terrible is trying to help defend, okay? At this point, the enemy Cossacks in the cap, the Maya is almost in the cap, and our team is continuing to push. This isn't so bad. A Cossack, a Massachusetts, a Algerie, a Heinrich, and a Lasso all being here is not necessarily bad because they could, in theory, knock these four ships out and come back to our cap. But of course, they do not do that. The Andrea Dory and the Repulse, at, for their credit, turn around now, but at this point, it's way too late. They are way too close to Vladivostok. And the enemy carrier is going to feed on them as well. This Maya is going to kite and start fires. Our carrier is still not flying uh, out to this flank, except he did this time. He only did this because the Maya got to a point where the Pobeda was probably lit. He wasn't in a position for anyone to shoot him, though, because of this island right here. This is unfortunately a byproduct of world of warships uh rewarding damage farming and not necessarily focusing or trying to teach people positioning and working towards getting a win okay at this point this was a huge mistake of mine I threw it in reverse and turned around to try to help the cap in the hopes that these two battleships would survive longer than they do um, and that I would survive as well. Unfortunately, that didn't occur. Now you're going to see me <laughs> fighting 1v1 against this Vladivostok. Both the Renown and the Andre Dory are dead at this point. Let me back that up. I wanted to, sh I wanted to showcase something. The Repulse is full health. The Andridori is full health. We're going to let it roll. Okay. You just saw the Andridori lose about half his health. That was from a shot from the Vladivostok because of the fact that they're pushing in so aggressively at this Vladivostok. If they had gone northeast... This would have changed the engagement quite a bit. Vladivostok dies, or the, excuse me, the, the Andrea Doria dies. The Repulse was getting farmed by the carrier and the Maya at the time. The Vlad actually kills him. Now I get point blank on the Vlad. Take the Vlad out, but he also killed me at the same time. So at this point, you've got... A 50% health Heinrich, a 50% health Massachusetts, and the only thing that these two are fighting on this flank is this almost dead Mackinson and maybe the carrier, okay? Now, at this point, the only thing defending our, our cap is Algerie and the carrier. The Mackinson's dead. If you're looking at a mini map and you see this specifically, an enemy ship alive near your cap, the last thing on your mind should be to push through their cap. I am unsure whether the Heinrich or the Massachusetts thought they would chase the carrier here, but this carrier was very smart. He knew nobody was east. So what did he do? He drove north, leaving the cap, knowing he could deal damage to all three of these without worrying about his ship. Okay. Now, there's an AFK Mackinson here. This whole time, these three have probably been lit except for the Cossack, of course, because of this person. Now, this is another thing you're going to see that World of Warships players make a mistake of. This ship is AFK. The only thing that they are lending to their team is spotting. They are not a threat. All three of these ships are going to focus on engaging this Mackinson while ignoring the easy one-shot kill cruiser in the cap. 
Okay, at this point, the Algeri dropped torps on the Maya. The Maya dropped torps on the Algeri. They've killed each other. Mutually assured destruction, right? But if you notice, we're still capping. We're still capping. You're going to see why here shortly. There was an enemy sub that was not spotted the entire battle until right now. This, this moment. Meanwhile, these two are still farming this Mackinson while we are capped almost three quarters of the way capped. OK, the carrier is the only thing defending at this point. Both of these guys are behind an island. They can't shoot at the Chaklov. They can't shoot at the sub. However, both of them can be engaged. OK, by the enemy carrier. The carrier killed the destroyer. Now, at this point, they've reset the sub, which is good. The carrier is doing what he can. The Massachusetts, unfortunately, because he was focused on that AFK for so long, allowed the Chocolov to deal damage to him, right? Let me back it up a little bit. You're going to see his hit points sitting fairly low. But he was engaging this Mackinson for so long, farming damage, he was ignoring the guys near the cap. Cossack's dead. Massachusetts is low. Now, he drove a straight line. The Massachusetts drove a straight line, allowed the Chocolove to almost kill this Massachusetts. If they had ignored the AFK in turn and came up the five line immediately while the carrier was keeping the, the enemy carrier and submarine busy, this battle could have been turned around. So now you see the Massachusetts dead. And at this point, of course, you're rolling to a point where, I mean, they're just trying to damage each other. The, the battle ended because we they just ran out of time. So you're going to you're going to see time and time again so many people saying don't abandon the flank and yet this is a very common problem that you see in world of warships if you spawn on the west or east it doesn't matter if you're down tiered or not you can still fight yes you may lose your ship yes you probably will you know not do a lot but delaying so that your team can hopefully win a flank and come back is pretty important and if you guys see me on stream sometimes i will say hey guys please don't push south we need you to go east you know i'll be saying that to the west folks sometimes it works sometimes it don't you can't help but work around these things these things are are important in a battle though you don't abandon the flank if you're in a carrier you have to support the weak flank Nothing is going to be gained by supporting the strong flank, especially if you have multiple destroyers on that strong flank and a low tier destroyer or no destroyer on the other flank. The spotting is going to be dependent on you. And unfortunately, spotting isn't necessarily rewarded, so it's not what a lot of carrier drivers focus on. OK. Pretty much in a nutshell, that's the very basics of the start of what I intend to have every week. Try to put out a video for you guys. Um, I'm unsure of some of the material that you guys might want to have. If you have any ideas for things you want me to talk about, things you might need help with in terms of improving, please say so down in the comments. As always, thank you everyone for subscribing to the YouTube channel and following me on Twitch. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next time.